Dr. Ravi Mehta, Chief of the Experimental Aerophysics Branch here at Ames, an expert on Ames wind tunnels. Thanks, uh, Maria, and uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, proud day indeed for a lot of people who worked on the MSL project, and uh, like Tom said, uh, Ames had a big part in some of the critical systems. Um, what I'm going to be talking about is, is the uh, parachute part of the descent that people have just described. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to give you an idea of what our branch does. It's an experimental branch. We test all kinds of models. Uh, some will look familiar, some perhaps not. Uh, we use wind tunnels here at Ames. We have several of them and also test at other NASA centers. And the speed ranges go from subsonic up to supersonic. For the MSL, the parachute is what we were involved in, and there were actually two different aspects to it. One was, obviously, will it deploy properly? If it doesn't deploy properly, there's no need to worry about anything else. And the deployment testing is done right here in the biggest wind tunnel in the world. It's 80 feet high by 120 feet wide. It's run by the U.S. Air Force and there were several uh, testing entries and the final shoot was uh, tested about 10 times. It's uh, 52 feet in diameter, so it could not have been tested anywhere else. There were three made eventually, uh, one that worked, one was a spare, and the third one was tested here in the tunnel. So I'll show you a clip of that deployment uh, in a second. The second aspect which uh, worried the designers was the interaction of the capsule itself with the parachute. As it's coming down, the flow generated by the capsule is going to actually interact and interfere with the behavior of the parachute. So if the stability or the performance of the parachute gets compromised by the wake flow, and remember this is a supersonic parachute, and it's not just a regular subsonic. For one thing, it's 52 feet wide, and another, it's going at supersonic speeds, Mach 2 starts off at Mach 2. And so we conducted some supersonic tests here at Ames in the supersonic tunnel. This is a rigid chute, which is heavily instrumented, and here's a model of the capsule, and we ran several tests to see what sort of unsteady loading and behavior we would get on the chute under supersonic conditions. And here's a clip, and we use a technique called Schreer, it's based uh, on, on the name of a German uh, scientist, uh, basically, what you're able to see is uh, see the shock waves that are generated right ahead of the chute. So this is actually what would be happening on that chute as it was coming down through the Martian atmosphere. And all our measurements give us a good idea of whether there would be any forces or effects that would compromise the behavior of the chute. So once that was done, we went to the deployment part. This is a high-speed video that our branch uh, shot of the deployment, it's uh, played back at a lower speed and also there's a time jump as we go along. And we wanted to make sure, obviously, that it gets deployed properly and uh, there's pyrotechnic devices used to actually uh, deploy it initially and then make sure that it fills out properly and is not unstable while it's flying under these conditions. And finally, how did it work? Well, um, now it's it's, not so much of a, a big deal to talk about the parachute because the rover's been there for a year running around sending us data. But we saw this the day after the landing and it's one of my favorite photographs proudly displayed uh, on all the walls in our lab. Uh, it was taken by a reconnaissance uh, spacecraft that was going around Mars, happened to capture the capsule itself with the uh, parachute fully deployed and so a proud moment indeed. Um, like I said, right now, it doesn't seem all that exciting. A year ago, we had a public event here at Ames, hours before it was MSL was supposed to land, and we got all kinds of questions of uh, what are the odds of the chute not working or one of the four systems not working. Well, the chute, if you look at it, is perhaps the least glamorous of the four systems. If you look at the heat shield and the chute and then the thrusters and the crane, but it's just as important. Any of those four fail, and end of mission. So now I can tell you that the probability of it working 100%. Right, thanks. <laughs>